All right, so when you break apart the frame, you get like this, you know, this like crappy thing behind the mat. So you don't, I mean, most of the time you're gonna make weird sized stuff, so the mat is gonna be like leftovers. So the first thing you do, come where you can see, is just put the mat down and you measure the mat because that'll be the perfect size. So it's a 16th shy of 14 and a 16th shy of 11, probably, because it's 11 by 14. So you want to just stick to the original measurements of the mat. So um, to save your mat paper, you want to um, only cut out what you need, right? So I'm going to cut out the 11 by 14 like, out like that, because that preserves the most usable space. If I cut out that, I feel like I'd have less usable space. I think I'm gonna go that way. This, this winds up with a bigger rectangle, more versatile, okay. So the way I have to do that is I'm gonna cut my 11 first. So I'm gonna measure down here and put a very light mark. Okay. You could do this on the back too. But I don't. I don't usually like to do that um, because I'm afraid of like stuff behind on the bot, like on the bottom here, getting scratching up the thing. And then go up and measure your 16th shy of 11 here. And then what I do is I find the marks and measure out where the 14 is and put myself a little tick mark for where to stop. And actually, I can do this too, just as a bigger reminder. That's about where I need to cut to. Make sense? So, what I usually do here, uh, if I ever had the luxury of a bigger table, is I'll uh, find my mark right there, put my blade on the mark, and then line it up down here. And then find my mark up there, which is too small to see, really. Let me find it again. Gray on gray is tough. So since I can't see it, what I'll do is I'll actually slice. A 16th shy of 11. So I can see that slice better than I can the little mark. So I line up the slice and the mark. And you don't want to go and slice it all in one shot. You just without a lot of pressure, you just pull the blade down. So essentially you're just scoring it. You're not going through. So as you go along, your slices get deeper and deeper just by the very nature. And you always cut on the waist. You cut on the waist side, so you put the uh, ruler in the way of the usable mat. Right. So never make it. Never make it in like one attempt. And then you go ahead and measure your um, 16th shy of 14. Put your slice. Place. and put it on the waist side. A you know, bigger table would be nice, but it is what it is. And the thing is, is if you if you do this like with heavy pressure, you're more likely to slip and push the push the ruler around. Now it's up. And it should be right about exactly the same size as the original mat. And there's a little damage on the corner, but that doesn't matter because it's going to get covered up by the frame. Boom. Okay. So these are all the materials you need. A little, just a little framer's tape and, you know, your crappy frame. And why not? 16 bucks for that whole big sheet. It's pretty cheap. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just make sure that it actually that it actually does fit in here. 
it fits fine. And just make sure that that damage isn't going to be that visible, which it's not. Looks okay. Cool. So, I put this away for now. And then what I want to do is just arrange this on here so that it looks approximately pleasing. And then I want to measure. So, I'll probably have the luxury, oops, I want to do inches, not centimeters. So, let's see, probably two and three eighths is going to be about it. Maybe two and a half. So I can push it around um, with the ruler until it lines up. Okay. So actually, a sixteenth shy of two and a half is where we want. So it's centered now. Okay. And then the curious thing about framing is that you want the piece to be a little high on it. One of the traditional ways, if you have like a longer frame at the bottom, is to do the exact same around the top three. So I can do uh, just shy of two and a half here. We're pushing it down. And that leaves me at the bottom with a three inch border. But you can tell that that kind of looks, if I pin this down here, this looks fairly pleasant, right? The relationship is based around there. So I'm gonna go with that. So now what I have to do is I have to make little tick marks. So I have to measure down uh, here, right, and over, and I have to make because I have to decide exactly where that's that's going to lay. So what I like to do is make a little corner elbow at each corner on the top, roughly where it's going to go. Okay, can you guys see this? This will be like, if nothing else, this might be the most useful thing that I teach you. You'll be uh, framing stuff for forever, even if you choose not to make art necessarily. So then I just double check and make sure that it lines up on those spots. Yeah, so, uh, sure does. Okay. So now what I want to do is very carefully flip this guy over onto the back, and then I take my framers tape. Framers tape is really nice stuff. Invest in some. It's not too expensive. And then I need to make a couple of little T's. Where did you get your framers tape? Cheap Joe's, I think. And then, okay, your natural tendency is going to be to set your tape down like this, but that'll pick up stuff on the side because it's sticky, so you set your tape down like that. That way no sticky stuff gets put in the middle of it. And then you take your two pieces of tape like this, and take oppose the sticky sides and make a little T shape. Does that make sense? So let's see, which way is up? This way. So then I take my T and I put it down on the actual image. So what this does is it sticks to the sticks to this and then the other side will stick to the frame and it'll hang. Two side? Nope. Oh. Just single side, you just take, that's why you make the T. So you're basically making two sided tape. Oh. And this is more sophisticated than like rolling it, you know. Are your corners going to fold up? Or is it not going to matter because it's going to be pushed down? Well, I like for the corners to kind of fold up because it shows that it's like a drawing, you know, and that you're seeing the actual physical thing. If you don't want the corners to fold up, get a mat cut or cut a mat. Okay, so here's where I need another person. 
we'll sum, we hold, so hold this edge up, right? And then I will go ahead and line up on my little L-shaped wedges. Okay. And then I just push down, right? Okay. Okay. So now to push that to the I need to have a little sheet of paper. So I just go and grab an extra sheet of paper, right? And in order not to damage the piece but still push, I put the sheet of paper on there and just push the tape down, right? That way I don't like pick up the drawing on the paper see it's so clean. Now it's on there. Perfectly, and that's all you need to, to frame it. So now what I have to do is just get an eraser and erase those. Needed rubber is good for this because um, it won't it won't like damage the the actual surface of the frame or the mat board rather. Like a hard eraser may kind of like take up some of the actual surface. Okay. I mean, that's that's the, the main part's done now. So all I have to do is remember which side is up. Put it in here, right? So this side is up. So I just make sure that when I put the, the cheapo frame back together that um, the little hanging cleats, which I don't like to use and I'll probably replace. Go a little properly. Yeah, there's the little slice. Okay. Then, we're skipping the cleaning step. You would want to clean the glass first. Because we don't have coffee filters. And there you go. <laughs> and so that's a mounting that's a mounting process where you want to show the edge of, of what you've done. The matting process, you cover up the edge, and because I'm so particular about the way the, the way little things intersect on the edge, like I don't want to cover up the edge like an eighth or a quarter inch with the map board. Yeah. I want it to be visible, so I just put it literally just on top of that. And so I don't like right now. I don't like the 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 two grays and the black. I'm gonna actually paint it, paint this black, and just have the relationship of different grays. Like, just gets get a can of spray paint. Just shh. It actually it'll look totally magical. You never know. But I mean that's what they do with these anyway. But that's it. Pretty sweet, huh? <laughs>